The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may contain income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We're so excited that you're here tonight. You are in store for a great night of motivation, education, inspiration. My name is David Bush, and I get to be one of your hosts and moderators tonight. And if you just arrive, can you find the chat feature and put in the city and state and where you're joining in from tonight? We want to see where everybody's joining in from, just so that you can see all the different cities around the U.S., uh, tonight's going to be an amazing night of information. You're going to get a chance to be inspired and educated on the habits of health. And you're going to get a chance to hear some amazing stories and information that applies to your journey. Whether you're a health professional or a health coach or a client on our program, or maybe you just found this information from a friend or another health coach and they've invited you to check out what Optavia is all about. We're glad that you're here tonight. We're inspired that you have a d decision to make about getting healthier. And we hope to make that decision a commitment, a commitment to get you to create optimal health and well-being in your life. For the next 30 minutes or so, you're going to get a chance to listen to or watch the Habits of Health webinar. And then immediately following, we have a bonus event for those of you that would like to stick around and learn about the full offering of Optavia. We're going to be talking about how you can get the very best results and some simple tips and strategies to get the best from the Optavia program and how you can help and encourage other people to get healthier with our Optavia Coach Opportunity. So welcome to the Habits of Health webinar and the Trilogy webinar will follow in just another 30 minutes or so. So uh, get ready and get buckled in and I'm gonna turn it over to Chantel, your host for the Habits of Health webinar. Welcome everyone to the Habits of Health webinar. My name is Chantel Flake and I am so excited to be with you tonight. This is so fun. So whatever phase you are in, you are in the right place because we're just here learning and growing together and diving into all of these life book elements. Have you guys been enjoying this as much as I have? <laughs> the first 10 elements over the past several weeks, man, they have been amazing. So maybe you've watched them live or maybe you've watched the playbacks or even on that, the podcast channel. But tonight we get to focus on how to eat healthy beyond fuelings. So we're gonna talk about that and then at the end, I have a special treat for you some Halloween tips. You guys, it's next week. Isn't that crazy? So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. So if you, if really, if I've learned anything from our life books so far, from being in this community for the past eight years, it's that our goal goes way beyond reaching a healthy weight. Would you guys agree that that's what you've gotten so far? It really extends all the way to optimal health and well-being. So in order for this to make it, in order to really make this a reality, uh, we're gonna talk about here in element 11, how we're learning to have a complete eating and shopping strategy. And that's gonna really help us lifelong. So the way that we start this process is learning the importance of your lean and green meal. So we're gonna talk about food tonight. <laughs> Our lean and green meal, this is really the first micro habit of healthy eating for life. So those of you who are doing the uh, optimal five in one plan, or really any of the plans that incorporate the lean and green meal, you know how be beneficial it is um, when you focus all of that energy on just preparing that one lean and green meal. Isn't that simple? We just put all of our efforts into that. And, um, and also really knowing how to learn how to shop and prepare that 
And I love the flexibility of even eating out. I have many clients that ask me, oh, you know, I, I want to still go out with my girlfriends or our family has these special tradition, traditions. And I love that flexibility. So if you actually have not taken a look at the Octavia dining out guide, don't miss that. There are so many great tips in that. Um, if you just Google dining out guide, Octavia, you, it'll come up. You can also purchase the pamphlet online, but it gives specific suggestions at popular restaurants for that lean and green meal. So it is awesome. So um, this lean and green meal, let's talk about this. Really what I feel like is, and what Dr. A talks about in this element is that this lean and green meal is like training wheels to help us make healthier choices lifelong. So um, I, my husband and I, we have five little kids and they're ranging anywhere, from, well, they're, the oldest is 13 and the youngest is two. And so we've actually taught three of them now how to ride a bike. We've, we have a good success rate so far. And it has been so fun to watch that process of riding a bike. So I want you to think about if you've done the same or if you've watched a child, or maybe you remember when you tried to learn how to ride a bike. And, um, and really though, the way that you start with that are those training wheels. And so what do, think about what those training wheels really do, how they stabilize the bike as you learn. And it's really part of that process of learning how to ride that bike, right? When you first start riding the bike, I don't know if you're anything like me, but it really felt awkward, right? It felt different. I was a little bit scared being a kid and I, I can see it in my kids' faces and they're a little bit wobbly. And I kind of think about that like when I first started this program. Did you guys feel that way? How you felt just a little bit wobbly with your health? I don't know if anybody can relate to this. Put a yes in the chat if that is you. If you feel, maybe have felt a little bit wobbly, maybe feel a little bit wobbly now, but I, I just feel like this is something, when I look back, that I remember with the Lean and Green meal thinking, I need something else like to complete this meal. Like I, re I remember being so into the pastas and the rice or maybe even a dessert afterwards. I was so used to it. But what has happened over the years as I've practiced the lean and green meal is that I've really retrained my brain to know what healthy portion sizes are and how to really think and stop intuitively if I was satisfied. And every time when I would stop afterwards, after I'd eat my lean and green meal, I was completely satisfied. So, so really learning how to ride this bike um, of, of health, it really is going to take practice. So give yourself some grace. I feel like lean and green meals are going to take some practice. So think about how you can really practice this for the long term. It's kind of like what we say. You may have heard the habit that we talk about to be trans transformational leaders. Lead from the future, act in the now. So really this lean and green meal, you guys, this is not just about losing weight right now. It's about finding things long-term that you and your family like in the future and still utilizing the lean and green meals and eating healthy for long-term. So how can you utilize this long-term? How do you see yourself utilizing these meals when you eat out? Do you see yourself being a healthy person and choosing that salad over that greasy, cheesy hamburger? Maybe, maybe sometimes you'll choose a greasy hamburger, but the majority of the time, do you see yourself making that choice? I know over the years, as, I've, as I have adjusted to this way and this lifestyle, you guys, we have completely revised our family cookbooks and we change what we order now. We eat so much more fresh now. We don't have those complicated meals that we used to. I don't know if anybody can relate, but like the casseroles, with the cream of who knows what in it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the many, many side dishes and you guys, it took me hours to prepare. Now we just keep it simple, we keep it fresh, lean and green. Because there are so many suggestions out there, I actually suggest to keep it super simple at first. If you are um, somebody who is just starting out with this, everything you need to know is in that Octavia guide. Everything that we're gonna go over tonight really is, is where you start from. Keep it simple. And then maybe look at some fun recipe ideas floating around that you can look at. I wanna hear from you actually. I want, can you guys drop in the chat thread 
what your very most favorite lean and green meal is. And if I haven't made you completely hungry already, <laughs> sorry about that. I know different time zones. I don't know if you've eaten yet tonight, but I want to hear from you. What is your very most favorite lean and green meal? Let's get some ideas going in the chat. I'd love to hear. So let's talk about what is on your shopping list. In this element, Dr. A really talks about how important the shopping list is and how this is like a huge part of our health because being prepared is so key. I actually talk about how for me, health starts at the store. Think about it. This is where you make your decision if you're what you're going to choose to eat for the week and what you choose to bring into your home that's either going to create that healthy environment or unhealthy and that's really what's going to set you up for success. So I find for me that preparing my lean and green meals um, and my shopping list at the beginning of the week helps me stay on track. And I personally like to do all of my shopping online and it's so easy just to get it delivered or, or to easily pick it up. Anybody else? I want to hear in the chat. Anybody else a big like grocery online shopper? It's been huge for me, life changing. It's a huge time saver, but more importantly, it really is. It allows me to stick to what's on my list and resist adding all of that stuff. Because you know, if I go in the store right now, you know what I'm going to see? I'm going to see Halloween candy. <laughs> and we all know what happens when you see Halloween candy. And you know what's even worse, you guys? The week after Halloween, when the Halloween candy is half off, because somehow that just makes into your cart. So if you can avoid that, I'm all for that. Making health easier. So anyway, I would love to um, sh introduce to you one of my clients, Sarah Flake, right now. And I've asked her to share her transformational story with you today. And what really impresses me about her journey is that her transformation started small. And it is amazing over the years how she has created these lasting habits and she has been intentionally practicing them for years. So Sarah, are you there? Can you share a little bit more about your transformation? Yes. Thank you, Coach. Chantel is my hero. And I didn't know when I first reached out to her about this because I had been a professional dieter. Uh, I think 21 was how old I was when I started my first low carb diet. And by the time I was 32, I had done every diet out there. I knew how to get the weight off. I did one where I like drank oil before a meal. So I'd be kind of sick. So I wouldn't eat so much. I did one where I would only let myself eat for one hour a day and like eat, eat, eat. Uh, there's lots of different ways to get weight off. And um, you know, if I had an event coming up, I would just do a binge diet and then and I had become this binge eater in the meantime. So I would just go back and forth and back and forth. And I honestly, I didn't know that this was anything more than that. And I reached out to Chantal and I said, I don't know what it is, but send me a box. And she was like, okay. But guess what she sent me? She sent me the Habits of Health, the book and workbook. She was my coach. And that lean and green meal, you guys, food had been my enemy my whole life. It was me versus food. It was always like, if I eat this, there's going to be the shame or there's going to be the binge. But just this really simple training wheel of that lean and green meal, um, I was learning not just about low carb. I was learning about portion control. I was learning about low fat choices. I was learning about healthy prep. Um, and at the time I had two little kids. My daughters were in elementary school. So I was initially really worried that I was going to have to be doing two different meals. Uh, but then really quickly, once I started this program, I realized if I'm treating myself like this, why would I feed my kids that junk? And so I would bring them grocery shopping with me and I would say, you can pick anything you want out of this vegetable section. And I let them kind of explore and just become like acclimated to new vegetables. And they got to be part of this process. And we tried all kinds of crazy fruit. My, my daughter's like a fan of kiwi now. She would have never tried it. Um, so the lean and green was a really great step for me in just learning long-term habits. And yeah, my weight came off fast. Like I, I breezed through weight loss, I had dropped 40 pounds. And honestly, I had lost weight before, but I had never, ever had confidence that it would stay off. And, you know, two years later, um, I was at 37, I joined a roller derby league. And at 37, I was the fastest on the league. And I had never been so healthy. My BMI was on point. My energy was on point. I now have this health coaching business that I'm doing. So the thing I love about that leaning green 
is it is so simple. I'm like Shan, I don't like to do tons of meal prep. Um, but like this summer, I went down to Texas to visit my family for a while. And the first day I showed up, my dad was there and I'm like, hey dad, let me help you with the shopping for the week. So I went to the store with them and I picked out, you know, lots of good vegetables, lots of chicken. And one of the days there, um, there wasn't a plan. And I was like, oh, no problem, I got it. And in 20 minutes, I had, um, got the gas grill growing, I'd fried up some chicken, I fried up some zucchini, and it was a really simple meal. And I fed it to these 20 people and they were freaking out. They're like, this tastes so good. What did you do? And I said, it's literally just good food. You buy good food, you bake it in a healthy way. And their minds were blown. I'm like, what are you eating that this is so revolutionary? Another one of the days, you know, I just broiled some asparagus and salmon. It took like 20 minutes prep time and everyone was just crowding all over. Oh my gosh, how did you make this? It's just good food. So anything you have to add sauces to or sugars to, it probably wasn't good food to begin with. This lean and green meal is such a great foundation. Right now I've got like five gallons of chili in my fridge. Probably not five gallons, it seems like five gallons. But the lean and green is a meal that you can eat where you know you're not gonna be hungry afterwards. You don't have to go back for seconds. And then the point where I'm at now with maintenance, you can add some dairy, some fruit, some grains along the sides, but I love food now. I know how to partner with it. Um, and something Chantel taught me way back in the day in 2012, she just said, your body is not a trash can. So don't put trash in your body. Where does trash go? in the cab. So um, it's been awesome for me to just finally learn how to eat food correctly and to do a program that isn't just a crash diet that teaches you those skills from day one. Sarah, that is amazing. I am so proud of you and your success. And thank you for sharing those tips and letting us get a little glimpse into how that you share that with your family. And I love the story about how you went in to your dad and, and your family and just whipped that up. And isn't it so true, you guys? I, after I finished my Lean and Green, I just say, that was the most delicious thing I've ever had. <laughs> when you cleanse that palate and you really are eating fresh like this, that is what you crave. So that is a perfect example of how you have made that work. Thank you so much for sharing. Don't go too far. I'm gonna have um, Sarah share a little bit about Halloween as well at the end. But I really want to get into now um, about, about this lean and green meal. So let's talk about this. There are four major categories that we shop for in this lean and green meal. So let's start with the healthy proteins. So as we go through these charts, I'm going to go through them quite quickly, but everything is accessible to you um, in your Octavia guide and also in, in your element book or in your life book as well. So in these categories that you're choosing, just look for areas of improvement. There are going to be different categories, and it doesn't mean that you always have to be eating perfectly in the leanest category. It's maybe just, like I said, areas of improvement. So there are lots of many different protein sources, but we'll talk about seafood first. And I'm not talking about the seafood diet. You know, that's when you see food and you eat it. I totally, my kids totally told me that joke yesterday. I totally had to say that. <laughs> but this is a real kind of seafood. This is a great protein source. You know that eating, in, in the element, um, in the life book, Dr. A says that eating um, even one of these from the seafood category can reduce your risk of fatal heart attack by 40%, you guys. I need more fish in my life. That's unbelievable, 40%. <laughs> but any of you guys who are totally gagging right now and totally not seafood lovers, you still have hope. There are more protein sources. There's meat and poultry. Dr. A does warn in the book that we wanna lower our consumption of red meat and focus more on the leaner category. So the more on the left, the lighter, the lean category. Um, but take note here, the five, six, or seven ounce category if you have done the program for any amount of time, you know that that correlates to the amount of healthy fat servings you want to add, add depending on which category you pick. So just make sure and get those healthy, healthy fats in. So you guys ready for your pop quiz? I want to hear which one of these have you eaten tonight or you're preparing for tonight, depending on where you are. Which one of these categories, lean, leaner, and leanest, and bonus points for whoever can tell me how many fat servings you are going to add to that meal. Okay, I'm gonna see who's smarty pants out there. 
<laughs> little pop quiz. All right. And for those of you who are trying to eliminate um, meat from your diet or just cut down on that, there are also some um, meatless options. So all this info is found in the Octavia Guide um, and also comes with your packet or your package for every new client. Let's talk about healthy fats. Hopefully you're not stuck in the 90s and you think fat-free is the way to go. Because <laughs> I know back in the day, we thought fat would make us fat, but we have come a long ways, haven't we? The right amount of healthy fats, there's so many benefits to this. And I learned that it helps to absorb the vitamins and it also is what gives you that satisfied feeling. Isn't that interesting? That's what helps you feel full. So let's talk about veggies. Who are my veggie lovers out there? Anyone on there? Anyone on tonight, a veggie lover? Or maybe we have a few that aren't so much of a veggie lover. I've had a few clients come to me and they've told me, you know, I'm not too fond of veggies. And honestly, they can only come up with about one or two on this entire list, you guys, that they even can stomach. And you know what I tell them? I say, good, <laughs> that's okay. We can start there. If you can pick one thing on this list, you can get healthy. And the good news is, is that it probably won't stay that way either. You're gonna be surprised how that list of veggies that you absolutely love are gonna start expanding. And I think, you guys, that's what goes for kids too. Just like what Sarah was saying, when you, when you really start introducing this to your kids, it really starts catching on. And what are picky eaters? I've seen a lot of people change. I don't know your kids, but I will just say a lot of kids have changed from that. So in this chart right here, let me just explain this. The, the different, the color um, codes on here, the, uh, it's just based on the amount of carbohydrates they contain. So the darker ones are gonna give you fewer carbohydrate calories and the lighter ones are gonna give you um, the higher. And if you ever kind of slow down in your weight loss, just note that this might be a good time to really eat in the darker green. So as you guys know, this program uh, helps us get into a mild dietary ketosis, or we also call it fat burn, right? And so having this, what we talked about, the proteins and the carbohydrates, that is really what allows you to be in fat burn. And what's really cool about this, what Dr. A talks about in this element is that you're still maintaining and protecting your muscle and your brain health. That's why we have that balance of proteins and carbs. The last category is the, the um, healthy snacks and condiments. And just in case you totally thought you had to go without flavor, this is really where we spice things up. So you feel free to add three, up to three of these a day. And really a rule of thumb to go by is that uh, each one, no more than one gram of carb per serving. So that's pretty much um, it for the four categories. So I want to turn it back over to Sarah for a minute because I want her to talk about some Halloween tips. But before that, um, Halloween is next week. <laughs> it is crazy how it's coming up. So I would love to hear, I just wanna get a feel for who's on tonight about how you're feeling about this holiday coming up. I've been talking to my clients about this and I've been really interested to see how some of them are feeling apprehensive, some of are feeling pretty confident. So on a scale of one to 10, where do you feel like you are on the confidence level? 10 being totally confident, you have talked to your coach, you have a health plan, you, any challenge that comes your way, you're ready to rock it. Or maybe, you know, on the other side of the scale, if you're one, that's if like somebody gives you one piece of candy, you're just toast. So I wanna know one to 10, where do you feel like you are in that, in that range of how you're feeling about this upcoming holiday next week? And we want tonight, with the few minutes we have remaining, we wanna talk about how to help you be prepared and rock this holiday. Sarah, what tips do you have for us? Yeah, so Halloween is the holiday for me. This is like all my Christmases come at once. Uh, and I love it, I love it. I remember my first Halloween, I went in and I was like, oh, I'll just do my best. And I didn't have a plan. And I ate so much candy, like it was ridiculous. I ate like 
insane amounts of candy. I was sick for like a, an entire day afterwards. It was horrible. So you have to have a plan. I don't care what it is, but have a plan. And no plan is also a plan. It's a plan to fail, <laughs> trust me. So um, I love to ask my clients, you know, what's, what's the plan? Either it's you're just going to stick exactly on your program and you know, what's the outcome of that? You, you know, you don't have triggers. You don't get out of, you know, if you're in fat burn, you don't stick it out of fat burn. You stay in control. You give yourself the things you can do. If your plan is to stay on plan, make sure you're focusing more on what you can do that night, not what you can't have because your brain always gets more excited about the things that can do. So come up with your great leaning greens or option two is you plan to have a controlled deviation. And for me, I'm one of those weirdos that likes Tootsie Rolls. I am going to have five Tootsie Rolls this Halloween and I only eat them on Halloween. And that's probably good because if I ate them more than that, I'd probably hate them like the rest of them. But that's my thing. I'm going to have five Tootsie Rolls and on my street, all the adults hang out and there's a big fire pit and the adults hang out and I'm going to bring my chili out there. I'm going to have my big thermos of hot tea um, and I'm going to pass out, you know, non-sugar treats to the kids or the other option is your plan is no plan. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to go totally off plan. I know the consequences of that are going to be, it could trigger a huge spiral. It could be off plan for way longer than I am expecting. It could trigger some um, big cravings. It could give, make me some have some self doubt, but if that's what you want to do, own it and accept the consequences. So it's, it's a valid choice to go off plan. Is it what you want? Uh, so pick your plan. And then um, I, like I said, I, I love this holiday, but I really don't like having candy in my house. So something I love passing out and chat in the thread if you have other items. Um, people have loved when I pass out, I get on Amazon and I get little like glow rings and glow necklaces, any of the glow stuff kids like. Uh, one year I passed out big fake plastic bugs. People loved that. You can pass out like vampire teeth, spiders. Uh, there's lots of fun non-candy things. You don't want to have this stuff in your house. You do not. <laughs> so as much as you can do to keep all these trigger foods out of your house, please do. Um, if you're out and walking around that night, keep some gum in your mouth, minty gum. I promise you it's going to help you from mindlessly popping things in your mouth. Your kids might be handing you stuff. Other people might be handing you stuff. Keep some gum, have a bottle of water and eat your big lean and green meal before you go out. So that you're not going into it hungry. Um, and then also, you know, maybe play a mental game to stay occupied before you go out with your kids, write down a list of all the costumes you think you'll see and be checking them off so that by the end of the night, you know, whoever had the most on their costume bingo, or you could do it even with candy types, have something else to engage your brain. That's not just this hunt for candy. And then something I do with my kids, because you know, I'm going to let them go trick or treating. Obviously I'm going to let them collect their candy, but when they get back to the house, I offer them a buyback. And there's no pressure. I don't say they have to do it, but I say, hey, great job. You collected a lot of candy. Every piece you give back to me, I'm going to give you a nickel. And I just leave it at that. And it's the same every year. They're always like, no, 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 we're not going to give you any. And then half an hour later, they start pushing me a few and I start giving them nickels. And an hour later, they've pretty much willingly given me all of their candy, except maybe five or six of like the king size. But it helps my kids really look at what they have and evaluate what they really want. Um, and then you can decide what to do with that candy. Me personally, I know candy's a trigger for me. I put it straight in the trash. I know other people will donate it to a dentist, send it to the troops, get it out of your house. So, you know, there's lots of fun ideas for this with your candy, but I just, you know, my biggest thing is have that plan. Um, let's see, non-sugar alternatives. What are some of the alternatives? Oh, bubbles, otter pops, mini Play-Doh canisters. You guys have some great ideas in this chat thread here. Um, king size should be worth a quarter. Yeah, David. <laughs> so anyway, you know, Halloween is going to be awesome this year. Have a plan, have confidence in your plan and have no guilt about executing your plan. Even if it means eating off a little bit, I'm going to eat five Tootsie Rolls. I'm going to do it a year from now too. I'm okay with that. And I live in the real world. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm mentally okay with that. But, um, Chantel, those are some of my tips. Is that helpful or, or what? I think I'm headed to the store. I'm buying all the glow stuff and the sugar-free gum. I love that tip of just keeping that gum in your mouth. So many great ideas. I hope that has helped you get prepared. You guys, just think of it. If you are prepared for Halloween, this is the start of the holidays. And how much more confidence would you have going into the rest of this holiday season? So hopefully this is just giving you a second just to think about where you're at and think about what you're wanting and create those intentional goals. Talk to your health coach. 
There is power in you saying this out loud. So I love it. Thank you everyone for joining us and for all of your participation in the chat. I really enjoyed learning with you and talking about this element. And don't forget to take a minute and answer these questions here on the screen in your life book and really put pen to paper. And don't forget, we have the elements on the YouTube channel. I went and watched these a couple weeks ago. I didn't even know they were on here. Dr. A goes through just even a couple minutes on each element and it's so powerful just to listen to those right before you uh, read your actual, read the element. So it's a really, really great resource. And next week, we're gonna be talking about element 12, which is a super exciting element. Listen to this, optimizing your success and reaching a healthy weight. So thank you everyone for taking the time to invest in you tonight. We will see you next week. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may have contained income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team.